I, I'm not saying you did not do your duty, please understand, but my point is as a congressman who trusted what I was being told, I'm not on the Intelligence Committee, Senator Dorgan, but I am on the Armed Services Committee, and I was being told this information, and I wish I'd had the wisdom then that I might have now. I would have known what to ask, but I think many of my colleagues that did not have the, in, the experience on the Intelligence Committee we just pretty much accepted. So where along the way, how did these people so early on get so much power that they had more influence in those at, in the administration to make decisions than you, the professionals? Did um, let me try to answer you first, but let me say right off the bat, I'm glad to see you here. Thank you, sir. Uh, as a Republican, uh, I'm somewhat embarrassed by the fact that you're the only member of my party here. I agree. But I understand it. Um, I'd answer you with two words. Let me put the article in there and make it three. The Vice President. Oh, wow. <laughs> Go ahead. I'd have to interject something similar to what I said to Senator Feinstein. To a lot of the analysts working these issues, we weren't aware of what was going on up there, whether it was the Vice President or somebody else. To give you an illustration, I didn't even know about the existence of the Fife Office in the Pentagon until maybe six, seven months before the war. And the way I found out about the existence of Mr. Fife's office, because somebody who worked on terrorism in our bureau showed me a product produced by that office. My, as I recall, it was two pages long, and it was the evidence linking Iraq with terrorism. And the person was giving it to me effectively as comic relief, saying, can you believe what's on this paper? It was as if I had gotten my morning traffic someday, because there's a lot of junk and in intelligence that the analyst knows that has to be sifted out to get to the real kernels. And it looked like an unsorted pile of junk. Uh, and this is one reason the Fife office which does relate to the Secretary of Defense and then to others, becomes extremely important. I didn't <clears throat> go into it in, my, uh, in what I read here. It's in my written testimony. Those kinds of nodes and offices must be completely eliminated because people aren't even aware of them. There aren't standard communications between them and the rest of the intelligence community. And more importantly, there has been no vetting of their personnel you know, whatsoever for professionalism, for experience in that field. That office basically was writing intelligence, which was getting far more attention than a lot of what Carl and I, you know, were working on, and yet it had none of the professional standards, you know, that it applied to the rest of the intelligence community. And it was so low profile, if you didn't know what was going on behind the scenes, to, to many of us it was utterly invisible until the last, last moments. Uh, Congressman Jones, if I can extend what Wayne White mentioned with regard to the detached nature of some of what was going on in the Office of Secretary of Defense and Office of Vice President, um, what, what this little group under Mr. Fife was doing and trying to come up with all the scraps, you know, trying to uh, show a link with al-Qaeda, uh, they did put together a briefing which was briefed out at Langley to Mr. Tennant and to members of the Counterterrorist Center. Again, I wasn't working on counterterrorism at the time. I didn't receive the briefing. Um, but it wasn't the whole briefing, as we later learned, uh, that they provided down at the White House. And the way I and others found out about this was in a hearing of the Senate Select Committee of Intelligence, closed hearing, in which um, one of Senator Feinstein's colleagues had before him the version of the briefing slides that he was given. And my colleague, who was then Deputy Chief of the Counterterror Center, had the version that he was given. And the version that came to the intelligence community was missing the couple of slides that were devoted to criticizing the community for how they were missing this big link between Saddam and al-Qaeda. And here's what the intelligence community is doing wrong and why their analysis on this is so poor. This was never briefed to Mr. Tennant or to the Counterterror Center. It was briefed down at the White House. And only thanks to uh, one of the members of the Senate Intelligence Committee did we ever find out about it. But if I could ju just add one more, and I would disagree with my friend Carl Ford on this. 
Uh, that group wasn't established because the intelligence community wasn't doing its job. It was doing its job rather intensively and devoting a great deal of effort, particularly the Counter-Terror Center, again, I wasn't in it at the time, to this whole issue of Iraq and Al-Qaeda because they were asked so many questions again and again and again and again and again. So they wrote a bunch of papers. It wasn't that they didn't do the good analysis or come up with the specific evidence. It's that the policymakers, these particular ones in the Office of Secretary of Defense, didn't like the answer. And the answer was there's no alliance. And that was a very well-documented answer. And there was a lot of other information that pointed in an opposite direction from all these scraps that Mr. Feist's office put together and we later read about in the Weekly Standard. Evidence that showed, for example, that there was not training going on, that there were not contacts between Iraq and just about any Islamist you could come up with in, in Afghanistan. That was all the other side that was ignored. So, so one